Mr. Franks for five minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the First Amendment of our Constitution gives us this precious freedom of speech that we so cherish in America. Contrary to the heated debate in public opinion, we are in the United States rarely facing the kind of persecution that necessitated this great protection. So I rise today to shed light on the abridgment of freedom of speech that is often widely discussed, but that few Americans ever have to endure. Across the world, Mr. Speaker, individual freedom of speech is frequently infringed. Uh, a posted critique or just sharing one's views freely on the Internet can be punishable, even by death. Late one evening in September, a well-known Indian journalist, Gauri Lankesh, was murdered outside her home. She was, quote, an establishment figure with a reputation for her fearless criticism of undemocratic elements within the parties in power. The circumstances of her death were strikingly similar to the murders of three additional Indian activists. And just weeks ago, another of India's most prominent political journalists, Professor Kancha Elia, known for critiquing India's caste social order, was threatened by a Hindu member of India's parliament. This member of parliament, who is an ally of the current BJP government, issued a statement that Kancha should be, quote, publicly hanged. Kancha subsequently received numerous death threats. These threats had significant effect. A mob tried to attack Professor Aliyah with stones as he and a co-worker were driving to a meeting. Kancha is now under self-imposed house arrest because he is not, simply is not safe otherwise. Was Professor Aliyah's crime significant? Kancha was called a modern-day Dr. Ambedkar, who is known as the father of the Indian Constitution. And his crime, Professor Elias, was he was the author of Why I Am Not a Hindu. A recent translation of his 2009 book, Post-Hindu India, is what seems to have sparked the threats against him. This book was described in a polarized context of modern-day India, specifically dealing with the productivity of the Dalits and the, quote, low castes and the seeming spiritual and monetary monopoly of the, quote, higher castes. These critiques became even more relevant in India's current agrarian crisis. The resulting farmer suicides due to hopelessness and the massive joblessness due to the demonetization and economic slowdown. Mr. Speaker, I stand on the floor of the United States House of Representatives to state unequivocally that the United States and the entire global community is and should be deeply concerned about this threat to the life of Professor Kancha Elia, one of the world's well-known intellectuals. Our trusted ally and friend India is better than this, Mr. Speaker. Professor Kancha, Kancha Elia's right and freedom to speak should not be infringed, and his protection and that of those like him should be of the utmost priority to the Indian government. Now, I'm able to express freely this viewpoint because we have freedom of speech in this United States of America, Mr. Speaker. May we remember at what cost and for what purpose we were given this priceless freedom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back.